So you have a tenant rate and your love over landing. You had plans to do it big on the trace and some super glamping. One idea, steep news and reviews. A podcast, the first rate, and here just for you. You don't have to think about it. Join us and be about it. Something interesting we want to hear about it. Come on, let's talk about it. Welcome to Waypoint Overlands Random Waypoints Podcast. Sponsored by Midland. Communication for every adventure. The industry leader in radio communication technology and innovation for over 50 years. Sponsored by MyMedic. Sponsored by Tembo Tusk. Sponsored by Shower Pouch. Sponsored by DeMoss Collective. Mission built and made for mobility. Sponsored by BrewTrack. Sponsored by Hard Impact Designs. Always remember, the opinion you follow should be your own. Just consider the things stated here to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I wanted to talk about, in general, from beginning to end, about first aid. Now, before we get into actual first aid, I want to start with a disclaimer. It don't matter what first aid kit you get. If you don't know what's in it and you don't know how to use anything in it, it's a waste of time. You could learn what to do and you don't know what's in your your first aid kit. And when the emergency comes, you're scrambling around and depending upon what the emergency is, that may be the difference in between a person dying or not, uh, the damage being worse than it than it would be. So you need both. And then you could have all of the, the first aid and you could know where everything is in your first aid kit. But if you don't know what to do with it, it's a waste of time. So what I'm getting to is you need to find some type of uh, outdoor wilderness training, some kind of um, first aid training and not just first aid training, like how to take your pulse. I mean, a first a, a certified first aid that deals with wilderness and survival where they're going to teach you like Knowles training yeah. where they're going to teach you about how what do you do with an open cavity what how do you really actually use a tourniquet uh everybody thinks they know how to use a tourniquet but a person that does not know how to use a tourniquet properly there are people who who have actually had to get something amputated and it's and it's because of improper use of the tourniquet and i could go i could go into all types of things in your first aid kit where if you don't know what you're doing it's not going to save you it's going to make it worse um so before we get into the actual first aid kit i just want to emphasize do your homework no N-O-L-S, Knowles training, uh, Google that. That's a good start. There are a lot of certified uh, wilderness uh, and first day trainings. There's uh, the Wilderness Institute. Yeah, Wilderness Institute, yeah. And um, it's it's a few others. I, I'm talking off the cuff. I should have had some stuff written down. But Knowles and the Wilderness Institute are like the top dogs. So those are the two I would recommend. We talked about this in another uh, in another podcast, but like some of the, the the bare necessities to have in your vehicle. And we uh, we talked about water and whatever. A medical kit is definitely in that category. If you're going to spend all that money on 40 inch tires, you should also be spending all that money on a proper medical kit and sending yourself, like Phil said, to a weekend of training to learn, you know, basic medical stuff. I don't expect everybody out there. I'm certainly not a doctor or a, or a nurse, but um, you know, you you don't know what's going to come up. So whether it's, it's helping uh, yourself or somebody else, 
uh, you know, things happen. You know, I thought about that when we did our bike packing uh, trip and Eric was, I, I put Eric in charge of our medical kit and we had, I mean, I think we could have done field surgery, to be honest. Um, not that I would necessarily would want to or know how to, uh, but, you know, we had a little bit of everything and medication is 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 important, you know, everywhere from some painkillers to, to um, uh, you know, uh, allergy kind of stuff is important, you know, just just different things in there, different kinds of bandages, you know, not everything takes a Band-Aid as an example. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that that kind of stuff, uh, antiseptic things to treat injuries, because uh, obviously the most typical kind of injury that you that we see is cuts, cuts and scrapes. Right. It's probably number one, number two. And it goes in progression of getting worse. Number two, eventually you get to, you know, broken bones and things like that. Um, obviously, the first priority is stabilize. And try to get you or the person to be stable enough to get to somewhere else, because we're not suggesting that if something serious happens, that we should have a, a, a surgical kit on board and we should just, you know, might as well just do surgery there in the woods. And, you know, that's not what we're, we're suggesting here, but certainly get somebody stable enough to get them somewhere where they can get the proper care. And this is why I prefaced everything with getting the right training, because. We're kind of scoffing at the idea of having a first aid kit where you could do surgery. But I mean, if you're taking a serious trip, you you do want to have some sutures. You oh, yeah, we had sutures. We even had that on our bike, sutures and a scalpel in case you had to cut something, you know, and 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 stitch it up or whatever, you know, because you could get cut yourself bad enough that, you know, super glue. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm being serious now, super glue, duct tape, things like that, that hold you together. Um, that kind of stuff can come in handy. So you should have that. Yeah. Um, that's where you, people look for, for, uh, places to save money and they pick the wrong places. The first aid kit is not the place where you want to save money or try to trim it down and take less or anything yep. like matter of fact. I think you should have more than one first aid kit. Uh, I was about to say I have um, I have mine, and because I was about to get into, uh, it also has to be easily accessible. So this is not something that should be buried underneath your spare uh, axle shafts, as an example, in the back of your truck. So I have one in my cab because that's where I normally am. I'm driving around, but I also have another smaller one here in my bathroom in the habitat. So I have, actually have two. Well, I have four and I have one, I have, I have three of them on my, um, on, on my headrest. So I can literally just reach behind me like this and grab one. I can reach behind the one back there. And then there's one on my back seat. Um, and then the fourth one is like my big kahuna. The, it, I mean, if I can't, if I can't stay alive with this first aid kit, it just wasn't meant to be. It's got everything in it. Yeah. Um, and I've had it on my mind to have this conversation on the podcast about first aid because of what happened to, in Alaska. Um, I was, before I was crossing the border back into the Yukon, um, I camped with some campers, I mean, some hunters who were hunting for caribou. And one of the guys had an accident on his... Um, oh, on his quad? Yes. And when he they pulled out this little bitty plastic bag and they didn't have nothing in it. To, and so I, I actually gave them a complete first aid kit. I just gave it to them. I, I even made a post about it. Um, but it just amazes me how people readily and often put themselves in precarious situations by simply not having a a. Um, First aid kit. Now, these same hunters, they had the latest, greatest guns. They had the latest outfits. They had quads. They had this. Um, their quads went into like an enclosed thing. They they had everything top of the line. But when it came to a first aid kit, nothing. Yeah. And I think that's crazy. Yeah, that's backwards for sure. Um, the other thing I would mention is uh, glad you bring that up because you're up in the Yukon somewhere. You know where you're going, right? So different places have different risks. 
Um, you know, as an example, if I go to Death Valley, one of my risks is going to be lack of water. It's going to be hot. Um, if I go to the Yukon, it could be bears. Think about bear spray and, you know, horns and whatnot. Um, certainly down here in Baja in the desert, you know, the rattlesnakes everywhere. Um, you know, so there's you know what your dangers are and what you're going to do. Run them like do do like a, um, you know, a mock play by play. Like, OK, if this happens, what am I going to do? What, what What's my what is my strategy? It's interesting because uh, uh, for those of you that know me, uh, no, I really don't like snakes. And um, my my fear going on the Baja Divide and riding across all of Baja was going to be rattlesnakes. Mm. We didn't see any, thank God. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I researched the living daylights out of what happens with a rattlesnake. If you get bit by a rattlesnake, what do you do? And I got to tell you, it's, it is, it's a great example of, of people not knowing or, or doing the wrong thing. And like Phil said, putting on a tourniquet wrong and getting your, your, your arm amputated because of it. Um, you know, yeah, people are suggesting to, you know, cut off the circulation. All this is a, a bottom line is after all I read, most of what you see out there is not, it's not correct. It's not, it's not accurate information. So um, kind of know what your risks are and know what your steps are to treat the scenario in case it happens. Yes. And I, and you kind of mentioned it already. You, you should have some basic medications and you should uh, keep up with the the dates on them to make sure that they are. Um, people buy first aid kits, and they'll have them like for ten years and yeah. never switch out the yeah. medicines. And almost everything inside it is useless; doesn't work. Most of those medicines, true fact, most painkillers, and most uh, most of those kinds of medicines have a shelf life. They simply are not effective after a certain time period. Right. Um, and I think it's the medicines is where most first aid kits fail, either because people don't have an, enough or they don't have what they should have or it's out of date. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason why I'm talking about the medications specifically, because there are certain med medications that can be the difference in you saying, whoa, I got to check into a hotel or that's the end of this trip. Um, uh, for like diarrhea, you know, being able to have a modium or, um, yep. so, uh, bike trip. you got, you got to have, you, that, that's, that's a, that's the top of the list. And like Benadryl. Yep. When you, when you're traveling, there, there's so many types of, uh, plants and vegetation that you don't, you're not aware of that either maybe you eat and, and you have allergic reaction to, or it touch and have allergic reaction to, and yeah. you can just gangs and, and spider bites and it goes on and on neosporin to like treat infection, you know, to, you know, clean out cuts and stuff. I mean, and, and it's all gotta be, like you said, it's gotta be within date code. So I, what my recommendation is for a person that doesn't know much is one, get a couple of books. There's like a book, uh, called when there's no doctor i think mm -hmm. it's called yeah, yeah. Uh, i have it in my bathroom um i don't have any of my books around me but there 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 are several books on this that are good books right you need to take some training and you need to buy a good first aid kit but don't just buy a first aid kit like my medic sponsors the podcast and the first aid kits that they send me, excellent. I'd recommend anybody grab one and go. But I take mine apart and I add other things. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. I take some things and I like, no, I prefer something else and I replace it. So don't just... Yeah, you know, you're familiarizing yourself. You got to familiarize. You can't be you, when when something happens. It cannot be the first time you unzip that case and open it up and staring at it, and everything's all wrapped up, and you and you go, well, you know, I don't even know what some of this stuff is. That is the wrong time to find that out. But you should be adding things too, like you mentioned yeah. about the snake bite thing. Yeah. Like my first aid kit has a little snake eye. I mean, a snake bite uh, yeah. portion in it. But it's not a focus. Right. So if I'm taking a trip 
to Mexico, I'm going to add some additional things that focus on the snake bite. So even with the reputable companies, they're not going to have every single thing that you need for every single trip. Okay. So if you've educated yourself, you're going to know what you need. And then you can you can supplement that that first aid kit with with what you need. That's right. And a good first aid kit. People usually balk at the at the dollar amount. There are a lot. But the people who balk at the dollar amount, I look at their rigs and they'll have a three hundred dollar shovel. They'll have a five hundred dollar stove. They'll have five thousand dollars worth of rims. They'll have all. But first aid kit, they don't want to pay twenty dollars. And yeah. that's crazy. Right. It's kind of like when we were talking last week about um, the Enri satellite. Uh, people will spend all spend all of those dollars on all these other things, but they don't want to spend three hundred bucks for a communicator that could save their life. Yeah, I so, think the summary of our podcast today is: you got to be if you're going to go out on an adventure, you got to put yourself in position number one, right? So we talked about communication. We talked about your rig. We're talking about medical. It's got it, these things got to serve you, right? You're the person. Your truck isn't on the adventure, right? You are. So you know all of your stuff that you bought for your truck and your rig is useless if you're not there, right? So you got to you are got to be the most important thing. Uh, the, you're the most important element uh, to the adventure. Mm -hmm. And I just want to mention some things in a medical kit that aren't in all medical kits that you need to have if you're going to be on the road for any length of time and be in remote places and you don't want to have to turn around. If, you're, if your plan is, I'm going to complete this mission no matter what, you're going to need additional things. Like most first aid kits, they don't have uh, things for dental. They don't have a, a cracked tooth uh a cavity there, all, there's all kinds of things that could go wrong that could end your trip or oh, yeah. or divert your trip for a week to get to a a, a dentist yeah yeah um dental and eyes yes yes I mean, a lot of kids don't have the eye wash thing or the proper you know thing for your because you know i i don't know about you but that's number one on my list i'm always getting stuff in my eyes Second only to like cutting my head open or, you know, <laughs> cut my. And, and, and let's be clear for the viewers. I know what you're talking about, but for, for the viewers that, that don't know, you're not talking about eye drops. No, 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 no. I'm you're talking, talking about, about eye irrigation. Correct. OK. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of kids don't. I mean, the more comprehensive ones have it, but a lot of one, a lot of them don't. That's something that I would add. And like I said, if, if I'm going to recommend one, I would recommend my medic. You can just go to my medics uh, mm -hmm. website. If you're listening to this, no, let's, why don't you throw out a number here for, for the people listening? Uh, Cause we, we've kind of beat around the bush. I mean, so they're, they're, what's the, what's the average price of, of, of one that you think is adequate for what we do? The key word is adequate. Adequate. That's not, yeah, right. It's going to be 200 plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, saying, like I, I'm saying 200 to buy the base kit. And then you, you're going to have to, like I said, buy some things to put in it. Yeah. So, and I'm thinking that might be another 50 to a yep. hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah. And that's kind of where I was too. Two, 200 to uh, 300 bucks probably. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about for one person. Now, if if it's a couple, I'd add about 50 bucks more for that. And I'd add 50 bucks more on there for every additional person in your team. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. if you have a, a four people in your team, you need a bigger first aid kit. Mm -hmm. You need a you need a you need a a main first aid kit. And then you need IFACs or individual first aid kits for each individual person. Yep. So well, another thing that you that some kids don't have, uh, in my opinion, anyways, covered well enough 
is burns because uh, you can it, it's really easy to whether it's a, a it's a from a fire or from getting splashed by something or even like you know touching something when you're working on the engine or something under your truck and you you know you can get burned in many different ways and uh that's something that is if you've ever gotten burned you know it lasts so you know you need enough bandages and enough ointment and stuff to put on it over a time period so it's not like it's just a day event you know it's going to go on for five six seven days so that's something that you got to think about depending upon the burn you don't really want to touch it after you've done that initial cleaning so like an irrigation syringe so that you can apply uh things and so that you can clean that open space because uh when you burn this a lot of times the skin peels away and it's open wounds um you mentioned neosporin earlier neosporin i've used that so many times for so (laughs) many things i just about have it by the gallon here no it's not going to help you with a major burn but like just your basic cooking burns popping grease and stuff like that mosquitoes ticks all of that i highly highly recommend it um sterile strips gauze um alcohol prep pads yeah well no i wouldn't use that for a burn but (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, but it's been a burns. You know, we sunburn, uh, wound wash, like aloe, uh, things like that. Because you know, you got to be like, I'm sitting inside now, but boy, the sun is blazing here at the Tropic of Cancer, of which I am one mile from. And you should have a stethoscope. Yep, I rarely see a stethoscope in people's first aid kit. Thermometer. I mean, people could travel without thermometers. Um, yeah, it's just just basic stuff, really. But being able to uh, early detect uh, an irregular heartbeat or a a, 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 a rapid heartbeat um, could be a difference in in you uh, having a heat stroke, having a heart attack, or something like that. Yeah. So. And and taking your temperature, same thing, you could you might be able to catch before you reach a certain point or may sometimes you have a temperature and you don't feel like you have a temperature. So you're not even aware yet. And you can take that temperature like, wow, I'm at 101 and something's wrong. Yeah. And be proactive. Yeah. Uh, Another thing is airways. You I don't know the name of it but I have one you stick it in your throat and it keeps your, your airway open. I also have one for the, for your nostrils because you might be doing something to the mouth. So you need, you need um, it for your nose and for your mouth. Um, so th- that's, that's a big deal is having, is having uh, instruments to open your airways. Um I think it's only like two minutes your brain can go without. It's not, long. it's not too long. And then after that, you, I mean, there's damage for every second after that. Yep. You, you're not, you're never going to be right. All right. So we're not, could be, I mean, just for the record, we're not sure we're right now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be worse. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll be worse. Exactly. Another thing that I don't see in people's, um, and, I was one of those people too until recently. I did I had I didn't have in my first aid kit things that really really addressed dehydration. Mm. No, I I had like a I think some little pill or whatever, but you you need like to be able to point. mix something with some water, drink it almost like a Pedialyte or something like that that's going to Pedialyte, gonna, yeah, little something. Pedialytes. We can buy them down here in Mexico, uh salt tablets. Right. And those things you'll feel different, like almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing is we were talking about cavities. Something we didn't mention is um, a decent first aid kit is going to have solutions for the cavities. But each of those solutions, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 also know that they're fairly temporary. Very temporary. It's to get you 
to safety or till somebody comes. Boy, um, I tell you, one little two thing could take you out. Take you out. The training that I've taken for first aid, the print, the first principle that they taught us was is every scenario that you practice, every 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 um thing that you do to be proactive for first aid, you should minimum be planning for a situation where help won't come for two days. Right. That's that should be your thought process. It'll probably most times not be the case. Yeah. But but two is a is a good safe number. Right. So you should have enough medicine to get you through two days. You should have enough gauze and band-aids and all of these things for whatever happens to you at least two days. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think. Three. All right. Is there anything else you want to say about? Uh, nope. I think we've covered it. Get out there and A, get a good kit and B, learn how to use it and C, uh, take a course. You have been listening to Waypoint Overland's Random Waypoints. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.